Welcome to Monday Morning Fights. I'm Jim Monson, and we're here to talk about the exciting fights from this weekend's event. I'm Jacob Forrest. Monday Morning Fights, Saturday night. Yeah, uh, you know what a Monday morning quarterback is, right? Yeah, I do. I guess that settles that. I'm JT Thomas. I know we're a lot of talented fighters at this event looking to improve their records. Um, lately, I've been having some guys come up to me and um, you know, basically wondering what's it, what's it take for somebody who thinks they want to be a cage fighter? Well, a lot of people think they want to do it, but you know, it takes a lot of hard training, you know, good coaching. Um, I'd say a good six months of practice before you really should step in the cage you know, and, and get in there and do it. It's not like fighting in the bars. Uh, a lot of guys fight on the street or in the bars, they come in and practice and it's pretty humbling to them real fast and they don't come back. It's, it's not a tough guy sport, it's a sport for uh, true athletes. We're not just letting anybody on there, you gotta be tough, you gotta win. Yeah. Who's, whose idea was the UCF originally? We just both talked about it, we were coming back from a fight in Bend and we started thinking, hmm, I think we could do this bigger and better than what we're seeing. And, and we, we told ourselves with every fight, we're going to put our money back into the fight. Because we wanted this to be more of a, more than just, all right, come out and fight, now go in the back and you're done. We wanted this to be something for the fighters, you know, something special for them. That's why they have pretty nice dressing rooms in the back to warm up in and practice in, and they get that whole upper deck to just kind of go back there and relax and not have people come back and hassle. All right, well, let's get started with the first fight. All right, so our first fight here is going to be Justin Baseman versus David Powell at 170 pounds. Now, um, Jake, what can you tell me about either of these fighters? Now, this is both their debuts. Um, Baseman is out of uh, Susanville, California, another one of uh, Rudy Valentine's fighters. David Powell's from uh, Roseburg. Okay, here it is. We're getting to fight time now. I think both these guys are going to try to keep it standing. Neither one of them have a wrestling background, as far as I know. So it should be an exciting fight on the feet. Oh, nice shot. Oh. That was an interesting escape. Turn around and run. Yeah, I've seen it done by some of my partners before. <laughs> and it usually works. <laughs> Except for in his case, it hasn't. Oh, oh, great knee to the Good head. knee right there. Pushing him back, stand it up again. This guy's making an exciting fight, trying to keep it on her feet. Nice leg kick. Oh, oh nice exchange. Seems like they're both trying to hit home runs here. Trying to knock it out of the park. Oh, they nice need shot. To set it up. They just need to set it up. If they took their time. Oh, geez, baseman right is there. really hitting Great hard. Punches. Good punches coming from baseman. Oh, oh nice shot. Great up with him. Looks like he's taking good punches in the back of the head. A little bit wild, putting his hands down on the side. You can tell he's fought in the street with time with you. Looks like baseman's trying to move in for the kill. Baseman's still looking very composed. So is Gillen. Looks like he likes to fake with that front leg kick. Powell's doing a good job. He's not afraid. He competes with a lot of tough guys every day. Rick Reeves and those guys doing a good job. Feeling him out a little bit. Good nice kick to the body. Who's David Powell training with? Oh, oh what, what a, a shot, shot. Jay Powell. Rick Reeves, Greg Kovac, Naharas. There's a lot of good guys up there in Rosebud right now. Yeah. Seems like with a little more training, he's going to definitely be able to handle it. He can definitely take guys. a punch, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, for sure. He really doesn't like it, though, running around like that. He needs to keep his hands up, stay in the pocket. Another big shot by Baseman. Taken with that front leg kick or front left kick again. Oh, he's kicking oh. and turning a lot. Oh, oh, big shot. And yeah, it looks like they're the calling it. That's over. 
Good leg kick, shot to the head, into the fight. And so Justin Baseman is victorious in his debut fight. Our second fight of the night is Matt Beam versus Charlie Caruso at 205 pounds. Um, Jake, tell me a little bit about this fight coming up here. Well, Charlie Caruso is out of Eugene. He's been doing submissions for about a year now, competing in several tournaments there. This is going to be his first fight. Um, Matthew Beam, he's from a Southern Oregon football player at the college and has been training with the New World Fighters for about four or five months now, making his debut as well. What do you know about Matt, JT? You know, Matt's a pretty good football player, very powerful individual. He lifts weights a lot and I believe has, holds a few records at Southern Oregon University. So we're going to see how he does for his first time in the cage. Oh, Coming great exchange. Strong. Both guys locking up. Charlie obviously looking for the takedown here, wanting to get it to the mat where he knows best. Matt putting him in the cage just like he was taught. Working a good oh, punch, what a perfect shot. right hand, and he's out. Russo has no clue where he's at. Even asking Governor some where he was. That was a good solid punch. Dropped him, ended the fight quick. Good debut. Ladies and gentlemen. That's very impressive. Now let's go back and fight. take another look at this knockout here so the people at home can really see that Caruso is hurting. Oh, and look at that shot. <laughs> Looks like he landed a left hand as they went to the mat, too. Yeah, that first punch got him good, but the second one, was good damage there. Bruce was a little lucky that Matt Boone just didn't decide down the road and finish punching yeah, him up. That's he, good he could have done a lot of damage. There. Now, one thing, one thing though, I, I noticed that Matt Boone kind of backed out rather than waiting for the ref to jump in there and stop the fight. Yeah, it looked like he just kind of walked away. <laughs> That's good sportsmanship, and you know, that's his first fight also. So, you know, a lot of the other fighters would have stayed in there and kept hitting it because you're really not supposed to stop until the ref stops you. But Matt Cini was out and did the right thing by stepping away, not hurting the, the fighter. Okay, and moving on to our third fight of the night is going to be Vayman Dennis versus uh, Marco Nahara at uh, 155 pounds. Um, Jake, what do you see here? Well, Marco, this I believe this is his second fight. He competed in Roseburg a month ago, so he's pretty new to the game. Vaymond, he's uh, making his debut. He's from um, Northern California with a really good fight team, Iron Pit Gym, I believe it's called. So it should be an exciting fight. They're out of Susanville. Isn't that where uh, Ken Shamrock trains also? Yeah, Ken Shamrock has the Lions Den there. This is another team outside of there, but yeah, they do have that gym in Susanville. Referee John Gunderson. He's a pro fighter. He's had lots of fights in the UCF. Now, Vayman Dennis looks pretty cut at 155 pounds. Yeah, he's a decent size 155 pounder. Good wrestler in college. Oh, Nahara pulls guard and gives him his back. How, how can you just give that position like this? I mean, I, is he even. So, Jake, what do, you, what do you do here to get out of this? He didn't come to fight. Well, you got to defend the legs right there. That's a hard position when you got a good wrestler on top. It's pretty hard to get out of that. Marco obviously is showing the lack of experience right here by not being able to get out of this. I, I would roll to my back, do a roll through something, try to get off my stomach, though, that's for sure. I wouldn't lay there taking the damage he's doing. Now, what's he trying to do there? Just put a little pain to him. <laughs> Nothing serious. <laughs> he's trying okay. to soften up and take a rear naked choke. Looks like Nahara isn't even bringing the fight here. Yeah, Nahara's pretty much giving up right there. He's not trying much. Now, for the fans at home, just to let you know, he is really landing some shots in there. You can really hear that. Tapping out. So what did Nahara do wrong there? What did he do right right there? <laughs> He gave up his back, obviously, right away. With you know, that's a bad idea. When you got a good wrestler on top of you, that's not a place you want to be. It's pretty hard to get off your back when they get the legs in like that. Uh, 
uh, we're moving along to the fourth fight now. Our next fight is going to be Matt Lively versus Rob Clark at 170 pounds. Uh, Jake, what do you have to say about these two fighters? Well, another uh, couple of inexperienced fighters. Rob Clark's got a win fight on his belt. Matt Lively's making his debut. Um, from the Iron Pit Gym, in Valentine's Day. Also students. out of Susanville. Yeah. All right, well, let's get to the action. So we got Handsome Rob here. And Lively out of Susanville. Coming in aggressive. Rob Throw combinations. Punch. Throw combinations. Going in for the takedown. Lively with a nice single leg. Rob pulling guard. Looks like he's got his head there in a guillotine choke. And Rob trying to get the choke there. I don't think he's got it very tight. Lively's got a line in there. So he's got a pretty good sprawl in him there, pushing his forcing his head down. Yeah. Oh, working oh, knees. Knee. Illegal blow. Working knees. What do you what do you do there, Jake? I right, Rob meet him in the head, and when you've got more than two points down on the ground, that's illegal. Now is that actually a point deduction or a warning? It depends on the severity of it. The ref can decide if he's gonna take a point or just warning. So looks like he's taking a point. He did it more than once there. Lively's pretty fired up now, I'm sure. Wanting to take a little. I think I saw oh, Rob apologizing. Oh. Right back at it. So keep his chin down. Some good knees there. Rob's taking some leather to the head there. Heavy leather. Oh, oh what nice. a shot. Playing a great combination. It's kind of wild, wild swings. <laughs> wild kicks. Man, Rob's showing how good he was in track in high school. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Making him count. That's what he's doing. Trying to get that head in the lock there. Yeah, he's uh, should be reaching back and getting his. There you go. There he goes. I'm sure his coaches were really kicked off. Right Opened there, himself him. up to the right knee Looks there. Looks like Rob needs to be trying to turn his part or the guy he's fighting into the cage rather than yeah. camp out against it. A couple more yeah. shots to the head there. Yeah, reaching over the head again, just putting himself in bad position. There you go. Good thing Lively's a little bit tired. Not taking advantage of it. Rob's getting in some good body shots there. And it's to the mat. And he gave up side control right away. He should be doing a pretty good job of trying to change position. So what he needs to try to do here is get that left leg back underneath him, right? Yeah, he wants Lively in between his legs, which we'll call the guard for this fight. Yeah, and there's Rudy right there. He's the, he's the coach of uh, that team out of Susanville. There he goes. Now he's got half guard. Lively oh, taking some shots to punches. the head. Lively did a good job of throwing his leg by there, though. Rob's giving it his back. Lively's moving in for a choke. Yeah, he's trying to get a choke there, but Rob's doing a good job of controlling the hands, not allowing him to lock that up. Now that right hand is the one he really needs to keep control of, right? No, nah, you just need to control one of the hands. They can't really choke you with one. It's pretty hard to get it locked in tight with just one hand. I did a good job there defending hands and turning back into him coming out on top. Mm, no action there, so the ref stood him up. Oh, both guys doing jobs. Rob dropping in for the shot, but I don't think he really wanted it all that bad staying on his knees. Oh, end of the first round. That was a good, exciting round. A lot of action going on there. Looked like Rob was in a little bit of trouble there at the end. Yeah, he wasn't <laughs> was really in any trouble there. Not, neither one of them could do much. Pretty much in a stalemate. The ref would have stood it up if the time didn't run out. Second round here. Oh. Nice left by Lively. Oh. Some wild kicks there. Oh, there was some wild stuff going on. I'm not quite sure what happened. <laughs> Rob maybe slipped. Oh, and it's a quick tap out. Yeah, good rear naked choke there. Um, Rob, I think he got a little confused when he fell down and didn't really try to defend the choke there, but you know, that happens in these fighters. He was just excited to get in there and be seen by everybody. 
Looks like Lively, Lively had that uh, had that rear naked choke set in no time at all. Yeah, he jumped through it right away. Rob's pretty tired. Lively looks to still have quite a bit of energy, so I'm sure that made a big difference in the fight. All right, moving along. Our fifth fight of the night is going to be Trip Thompson versus Kyle Guerin at 150 pounds. Now, I understand that uh, this is Trip's debut fight. Yeah, this is actually both guys' debut. They're both young kids, really. Uh, Trip's 15 years old and Kyle's 17, I believe. So, a couple kids that have been training for a while making their debuts. Should now, Trip's fun. actually uh, from a wrestling background, isn't he? Yes, he is. Trip's a uh, wrestler. He's wrestled pretty much his whole life. He competes at Crater High School in wrestling. And, uh, training with the New World Fighters for a little over a year now. So how do the wrestling coaches feel about um, feel about their guys getting in and cage fighting? I think a lot of them were worried about it at first, but you know, realized a lot of the sport you know relates to wrestling, and you know, most of the coaches are excited that their athletes are actually doing something in the season. Keeping in shape and exactly expanding on their skills. Trip was saying he wanted to keep this on his feet. We'll see what happens. Kyle moves right in there, trip. and Trip pushes him back up against the cage. He's got double under hooks. Oh, oh grab the cage. That's illegal. That's illegal there. But got his hand off the time. Now, is that another one of those warning and point deduction? Yeah, they usually warn you. It's you know not good to do, but you can get away with it quite a bit. Trip's really wanting to get this to the ground right now. He's not wanting to trade. Obviously, he's a wrestler, so that's where he's going to be more comfortable. Kyle's doing a good job of defending the takedown, though. He's not quitting. Nice punch there. Oh, wow. Kyle Gillen getting the takedown. That's surprising with Trip being a wrestler like he is. It's like he's looking for an arm bar or something. Got his legs, his legs high in there. Coaches are warning me for how. Oh, there it is. Oh, oh that's tight. Oh, man. Good arm bar by Trip. He really had that sunk in in a hurry. Once he had a hold of that arm and turned over, it was it was over. Yeah, that was pretty much it once he got his legs high and turned in right there. So Trip Thompson, 15 years old, winning his first fight. Pretty impressive. Both those kids just having the nerve to get in there, you know, when they're that young. It's, it's exciting. I think both these kids will be back. Okay, we'll move it into our sixth fight. It's going to be Ricky Story versus Garrick Jones at 185 pounds. And let's get to the action. Who's in Derek Jones' corner? Derek's got uh, Sean Jewell coaching. He's a pretty good coach over there from Bend, Oregon. He's got a lot of good guys underneath him. Some good pros, decent amateurs coming up. It's, it's a real quality team over there. Who's one of the pros on their team? Damian Hatch. Damian real Hatch. tough fella. He's you been a lot of quality You might players. know him somehow, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tangled up with him once. Over in Bend, I believe. Ricky Story looks like he has... Who's in his corner? Matt Holt. Matt Holt. Yeah. Matt Holt. Oh, starts with a light kick. Shooting for a double. Looks like. Oh, out of guillotine choking. Pulls his head out just in time. From a wrestling background, what's it look like he's looking for here? Ricky just right away got the takedown like he wanted, and he's probably just going to look to punch this fight out on the ground. I'm sure, he doesn't. No too many submissions yet. He hasn't been training that long. Yeah, his ground and, pro ground and pound techniques is probably his best. Yeah. He's a real strong kid. Some of the guys we trained with worked out with him before and said he's just super strong, good athlete. There's referee Gary, or Judge Gary Kwan, I should say. He's trained for a knee bar. Oh, but Ricky punches his way out of that one. It's a great defense. Oh, into mount. Nice, I like to know. He's got his head in the cage, he's in good position. Raining down punches. Derek Jones just seems to be real overpowered. Yeah, I'd say for sure. 
I mean, Ricky's in great shape because he's a college wrestler, so I imagine he's doing tons of wrestling in the offseason, you know. Yeah, I don't think Ricky ever gets out of shape. Yeah. Who does he wrestle for? Southern Oregon. He's one of the wrestlers over at Southern Oregon. Mike Rich is his coach. Looks like he's just working from half guard. And Derek's really trying to get him back in guard so he can't get as much damage done to him. Yep, got his knee in. It's amazing that referee Gunderson wouldn't start him over. Put him back on their feet. What should the bottom guy be looking for here, JT? Well, he should be trying to shrimp back into, into uh, the guard position. I mean, Ricky is pretty controlling with his hips, but... Or he'd be wanting to work his way up the fence and get back to his feet, just depending on what type of a fighter he is. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot lately. Most of the guys, when they get put in the cage, they use that to their advantage to stand up. Yeah, it's, it's a whole nother level, because when you're a wrestler, you're used to taking a guy down and putting his head in the cage and working him, but... Guys are getting really good at standing up. I know they've had that problem a few times. <laughs> Trying to cut off his air supply a little bit. Tire him out. Ricky's just working punches on him. Landed some good solid punches there. Short time left. Ricky's going to dominate this round, I believe. Trying to leave no doubt in the judge's mind he won that round. That's a definite good round for Ricky Story, though. Got the takedown right away, never lost position. With round two, Ricky with a low kick, trying to set up a good punch. There he goes with the combination. Oh, underhooks, takes him right to the, back to the ground. Nice shot of our ring girls there. Derek Jones looks like he's in all right position. There he goes. Could be working a triangle. Oh, and Ricky powers out of it. Just too strong for him. Landing great punches there. Way too strong. Good punches getting through again. It looks looks as if he's working working pretty well from side control there. Oh, good punch landed. Just teammate Matt Holt. Derek Jones seems to be in all right position, even for being in, in half guard. He's doing a pretty good job of making it hold for Rick, hard for Ricky to hit him. Here. Oh, there's a great oh, punch. Looks like there might be a little blood coming out of Derek's nose. There we go, see what Ricky does. Oh, Gunderson breaks the action and stands them both back up. Maybe we're gonna get to see a little stand-up out of Ricky, huh? Yeah. Ricky looks like he's breathing pretty hard. Well, he's been working hard getting his take down and fighting on top, and it wears the guy out a little bit. Hmm. Really surprised right there with that takedown. He's Ricky's got a guillotine in. Mouth wide open though. Just too just too overpowering once again. Yeah, too much experience on that wrestling. So yeah. Good wrestler's not gonna stay on their back long. He's got side control again. Derek having a little more blood coming out of his nose. Looks like a little of it's changed over onto Ricky. Looks like he's working for a triangle. There it is. He needs to lock that leg in. It'll be tight. Looks like he's locked it in. Get a little better angle there. Now have that lock there. 
looks like he's going to finish this. Oh. oh, good job by Ricky of getting on that. Drug his way out. Short time left here. We'll see what Ricky can do before this round's over. Or maybe we'll watch Matt come in the cage. <laughs> Pretty much Ricky Story has dominated this fight with his wrestling ability, but... A jiu-jitsu guy against a wrestler, most of the time I'd have to say it probably would favor a jiu-jitsu guy just because the wrestler isn't training submissions. Right, Ricky seems pretty tired, so he's going to go to what he knows best when he's tired, and that would be wrestling. So. Yeah, so he'll probably look to see another takedown. Yeah, look for him to take it down. <laughs> oh. Right away, right away, body lock, took him down. <laughs> I think that was the lovely Liz. That was her. Ricky just holding on to position on top. Both guys are very tired at this point. Looks like Ricky hasn't had any problem getting to that side control. Yeah. He's just been able to pass, guard, pass his guard at will. Shot of Jason Gutches there, the attending doctor. Yeah, he's the uh, UCF doctor. Take, make sure all these guys leave these fights without too much damage down to him. Ooh, good punch landed. Now, what's Ricky need to do? We're going to move on to the Dustin Hagelin Joey Merletti fight, 145 pounds. And let's get to the action. That's the reason I get up in the morning. Couple more young kids again. This Joey kid, I seen him the other day at the gym. He is pretty stacked up, muscled up kid. So this should be a good, exciting fight. Dustin, Dustin Crater, training with the Nola Fighters. Who's in his corner? Yeah, I'm not sure who's in his corner there. I think it was Marcus Lewis. And I'm not sure who the other coach was there. It was Marcus Lewis. It looked like Reno boxed to go. Couple of good yeah. striking coaches there in this corner. So, Jake, what do you think Dustin's got to do to win this fight? Uh, just stay in good position and throw some, some good punches in. You know, sure, he'll have a good shot at winning, but, you know, both guys look the same. You know, Joey's pretty strong, and he stays inside and can land some solid punches. He might be able to knock Dustin out. He looks real explosive. Yeah. Dustin's strengths are on his feet, though. His kickboxing is pretty great for his, for his age. Oh, look at that. Which, yeah. Great kick to the head. Ray, raging him into the cage. There he goes. Dustin pulling guard. Has a choke on him. They're already exploding on his body. He's got that guillotine pretty good. Oh, what happened there? Yeah. Oh, trickery there. <laughs> Dustin's just relaxing in there, just saving his energy. Marletti. Might just be losing a little bit too much energy here. Yeah, Dustin's doing a real good job of tying him up, not allowing him to do much damage to him. Yeah, I don't think any of those punches have really counted in his hitting my own. It's like Dustin's just trying to hold on, hoping to get this round, hoping to get this put back on his feet. Oh, try attempted arm bar that. Very good. Nice. Not a very good way to defend it, but he's back on his feet, right where he wants to be. Let's see if he sets us up with a jab. Yeah. Oh, a big knee. Nice. Good punches by both fighters. Dustin pulling guard. I don't know who tied him that one. Would you say that that would be the move he'd want to do right there is pull guard on a guy and just no, grab double I'm overhooks. I'm really surprised at him doing that coming from a wrestling background and training with the New York Fighters. I'm sure the coaches are really going to be on his bed about that. Yeah, they probably are as we speak. Looks as if Dustin's just down there collecting his thoughts a little bit. Doing a good job. Oh, and he rolls him through. Right into full melt. Oh, could be good punches right landing right there. Oh, good oh, punch yeah. right in the ears. Yeah. The ears, that's a good spot to land punches. Dustin's in full control now. 
Joey looks like he might be hurting a little bit here. Yeah, Joey's got to answer back or else the ref's going to stop it. I mean, he's he's taking a lot of punishment right there. Looks like he's got some blood coming from his ear. Not intelligent in defending himself coming up like that. The ref's probably going to stop. Yeah. You can really see the blood coming out of there. Looks like he's working for a choke. There's a lot of blood. Why do you think Dustin's not hitting him still, JT? Uh, I'm not really sure why he just isn't trying to explode with both hands and just make the ref stop it. I think he's just trying to pick his punches and make sure that each one counts. Not wear himself out. Yeah, not wear himself out. There he goes. That'll get it stopped. Good fight by both guys. Dustin looks strong there. And Andy with some good punches. Yeah. And it looks like the doc's coming over to take a look at Joey. Yeah, he had some blood pouring from his ear Let's there. See if we can get a shot there. There's Ken Cruz. He's fought in the UCF a time or two. Yeah. Anytime there's blood like that, the doctor comes in, checks them out, makes sure you know they don't need to go to the hospital, or lets them know if they need stitches or whatnot. Looks like his ear is in pretty bad shape. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, bleeding pretty good. I think his cornerman, Ken Cruz, is a nurse, so I imagine he'll stitch him up and have him ready to go. Good fight, though, for both of them. Their first time, young kids coming out, throwing down, exciting. Put your hands together. Make some noise for both of these fighters. And our next fight is a grudge match. It is the main event. And it's going to be Matt Holt versus Jason Vodonik at 145 pounds. Jake, what can you tell me about this fight? Yeah, well, these guys really don't like each other. Holt's a little upset that Vodonik uh, didn't show up for their last fight they were supposed to be at. Holt had some family traveling down from quite a long ways, and so he's ready to get a little revenge for the family. Off into the grudge match. Look at this guy wearing the Darth Vader. <laughs> oh. impressive. Yeah. I want to know where he got the helmet. I'm not sure, but Holt's <laughs> always quite the character. His last fight, he came out with a fur hat on, coming out to Michael Jackson with Billy Jean. Whoa, who was in his corner? <laughs> oh, okay. I thought that was Master Yoda. But it's just Trevor Harris. Okay. Hollywood. And Jason Vodonik. I think he's got his wife in his corner. Yep. She needs to be a workout partner, too. <laughs> Now at 145 pounds, Matt Holt just looks a whole lot bigger than Jason Vodonik. Oh yeah, he's a big 145 pounder. You see him standing next to Trevor Harris or JT Thomas. He's quite the man. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Here he comes out very aggressive. Jason looking like he's going to kick and punch. Wild punches from the hip. Holt circling. Oh, good exchange. Holt landed a jab. A good leg kick. It's like with those leg kicks, he's trying to get Jason to drop his hands. Yeah. Forces him into the cage. What's he working for here? Oh, Holt's looking to get a take down here. He's probably going to throw him. He's really loading this one up. Oh, here it goes. He's a great Greco wrestler. No doubt that's a five point throw. Right in the side control. Very good throw. He must be real secure with his man here wearing his peak shorts out here. Yeah, I'm sure he is. They don't call him Matt Dirty Holt for nothing. He goes with a knee mount. He's going to start working punches. Now what's Vodonic going to do from this position? He looks really scared right here. <laughs> What's he going to do, or what is he going to do? What would you do if you were in that uh, position? I would try to pull guard, which means get Matt Holt back between your legs so you can work in on submissions or at least keep him from hitting you. Maybe turn more to his left hip and try to get him between yeah, his legs. Yeah, there he goes. There something, go. something closer to that. I think Holt might let him stand up from here. Yeah, John Gunderson stopping the action to put both guys back on their feet. 
Let's see what's in store. Oh, oh Vidonic with a couple jabs. Both missed with good punches. Oh, good kick to the body. Vidonic, one of the legs. Are they squaring each other up or do they look scared? Uh, hold up. He's waiting for the big shot here. He's trying to set him up and then probably knock him out. Yeah. Donald's being patient, just waiting, not wanting to get taken down. Yeah, he, he knows that he's fighting wrestlers, so his best game is probably the standing. Now, before the fight, Matt had actually told me he did not want to end this fight too early. Really? Yeah, I'm sure he wanted to do some damage. <laughs> Letting him up now, that's... I like that guy. He's one of the Ooh, oh, missed with a big overhand, right? Oh, a big kick to the head, missed. I would like to see that connect. Spinning back fist. Both guys into the cage. Oh, and Gunnarsson stopped it. Is that the end of the round? End of round one. End of round one. Round one. Ricky Story in his corner. We already saw him fighting one tonight. Lucky Johnny. Good shot of Trevor Harris there. He's a pro fighter from the New World Fighters. I think his pro record now is one and one, isn't it? Yes, it is. Here we go with round two. Matt Holt with a giant, looks like a big WWF style kick. Oh, and shoves Holt or oh, the Donick off. He just pushed him right off him too. Yeah, he threw him off. Oh, that's cool. Some more leg kicks. So what's Vidonic trying to do here? Looks like he's trying not to get his head kicked. <laughs> yeah, he's just basically laying there waiting for the ref to stand him back up. Sometimes it's dangerous to stand up, they can really attack you. As you're trying to get back up? Yes. Oh, oh, nice good take down, good, good slam. The dog got guard, well guard on him though, that's, that's pretty good. The Donick's very good at deflecting punches as guys are on top of him, punching down. I've seen him in those positions before. Yeah, again.